Hey guys, it's me Astrid, and I'm trying a new way of updating you on my orchids. In that, I'm just gonna put them here and show you them on this lovely little table. So, let me see if I can flip my screen up. Oh yeah, let's get started. So here we've got my, um, I guess this is a Colmenara, but I like to still call it Odontocidium wildcat orchid. Um, it's doing really well. It has this new growth. This new growth has just gotten massive. It's so massive and I'm holding it up on a bamboo stick to keep it straight. It also has plenty of new roots and it's really settling into its pot well. So I'm pretty pleased about this one. Next here we have my favorite Miltoniopsis. This is the pink one that I called Crybaby or Pink Tantrum. It's not doing much. It's still got its little new growth. Here's one, here's two, three, four. Ooh, this one's getting nice, nice and fat there. You see that one is getting really big. Um, it's got something like seven and it's getting it's getting accordion leaves but at random no matter how much I water it part of the plant will get an accordion leaf and part won't oh and look here wait here we go here we have another new baby growth sneaking up these are ridiculous growers anyone who said Miltoniopsis orchid is hard is lying or lives in Texas where there's no humidity or the opposite. I don't know the climate in Texas, but anyway, get a Miltoniopsis. You'll appreciate it. We have my No ID Brassia. This one doing good. It's got these new growths with super long leaves. Um, these two new growths have really long leaves. And I was trying to clean up dead leaves on this just the other day, and I almost accidentally ripped off this new growth so this sneaky guy is doing well but it's growing a lot slower than some of my other orchids next we've got my second miltoniopsis this is rosy batman um, it's the first one i purchased but it's the second one i'm showing and it's got uh one two and three there's a fourth new growth somewhere but it's got four new growths oh this is the fourth one and uh yeah, it's doing pretty okay, but it's not being very active. Um, by the way, if you're curious about what I'm going to do in the rest of this tour, I am going to take you around and show you my growing space at the end. So if you don't want to see every single orchid and you want to see what I did with my mounts, definitely skip a little bit ahead. But that's this Miltoniopsis. Look at that little baby. Next we have one of my two Nelly Eilers. This one isn't mounted, um, but it's still loose in the pot. Maybe I'm going to repot it soon, maybe in some pure sphagnum moss or something, because its bulbs are all wrinkly and it's got one, two, three new growths, but they haven't been doing so much, and I don't know how healthy this plant is, but I, I think I'll try mounting it or something. It's, it's just doing so-so, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. That's the Nelly Eiler number one. Next we have my Dendrobium unicum that I mounted on a banana stand. Um, it has shed most of its flowers and the canes have become very wrinkly as it has um, been in bloom. So you can see these wrinkly canes. However, this is a pretty normal growth habit for the plant as you can see by it's other old canes here, um, but let's just have a last look at these beautiful, beautiful flowers. Let's see, is this one going to focus? Yes. I mean, look at that. Look at that. It's just stunning. There's the lip, the hinged lip, like this. Um, yeah, this is an all-around gorgeous, gorgeous orchid. I love it. And this one isn't fragrant. I sold my other one because it was fragrant and I didn't really enjoy that smell. So there's those blooms for you guys to enjoy. This is my Neophenicia falcata takakuma. Um, the root tip has been really, really red recently, but now that it's entering a little dormant stage in its growth, it's turning a darker color. And I wish I could have shown it to you the other day because it was really a true red. But it's growing a new leaf, and otherwise this plant is the same as ever. And yes, I did get this from New World Orchids. They're a good vendor. 
And next we have some exciting news about this recovering psychopsis. So first, let's see. Check out this root. Check out this root. That plant was doing badly and it has shot out a good root. But what is more exciting than that is, do you see it already? Check it out. It has a new growth it's putting out. I cannot tell what kind of growth this is. If it's, sorry about the blurring, if, if it's trying to adjust a spike or something or what, but if it's a new bulb, that's probably better for the plant because it definitely needs to root itself down better. But that's my exciting news on my Psychopsis. Good job, little planty. Next we have my Dendrobium kingianum. Now this guy has been doing some stuff, let me tell you, but one day it made a mistake. I was looking on this darn plant and I saw a spider nest growing, so I had to cut the parts of the plant off that had the spider nest, which were this, um, this cane and the top of this one, because I was not even gonna bother with any damn spiders. No way, no way. Um, we've got these keikis. I thought there were other spikes coming off because a spike came at the same time that these keikis did, but it wasn't. And this one has some good roots. Look at those babies. And it's starting to leaf out. This one has some so-so roots. It looks like someone bit that root, but I have no evidence of slugs, so maybe it's just the way it is. I don't know. This one isn't starting to leaf out yet, but its new growths are. So we've got this new growth is still soft, you see, but it's leafing out. The leaves are really supple, like lettuce or something. Is lettuce supple? That's such a weird thing to say. What a weird word. Anyway, this new growth is getting bigger. Focus, baby. And we have a tiny, tiny little new growth right there. Do you see that? So hopefully this plant will throw out even more new growths. It's got some good roots coming along. I'm, I'm pleased with it. Look in there. Look at these roots. Yeah, this is exciting. I love growth season. I'm planning to break off these keikis and give them to my mom someday, by the way. Next, we've got thing one and thing two. Remember my uh, Brasso Brassocatlia binosa cross Brassicola little stars? Well, guess what? I unpotted this and repotted it, and I came to find that these are two separate plants. Yes, I bought two plants for the price of one. Now, nothing too exciting happening with the growth of these guys. They had very healthy roots, I'm pleased, but let's just take a moment and appreciate this flower here, shall we? Let's gander at it. These smell so good. They smell like I don't know, like a cologne, they s smell a little bit like soap, sometimes a little bit like licorice, sometimes a little bit like baby diapers, but it's just this like wonderful smell. I know those were weird smells to list, I hope you guys don't mind. But it was just this really beautiful smell and the, the lip is so nice, the petals are thick, they have good substance and they're green and gorgeous. I cannot get enough of this plant and I'm sad that it's probably going to be out of bloom completely in another few weeks, but hey, it's healthy. It's going to bloom for me again. We interrupt this video to bring you a disgusting pinguicula. Pinguicula, it's really not you that's disgusting. You're just doing your job and catching all the goddamn fungus gnats in my goddamn room. But if we can look in and admire this plant, because she's actually not disgusting, we can see it's maybe she's going to flower. She tried to flower for me before, but aborted it. You can see a spindly little old flower spike there, and I'm really hoping she will, but I'm not investing too much care into this plant because I can't be bothered to get reverse osmosis water and properly treat carnivorous plants like... I'd much rather rebuy one of these every six months if I really have to, but she's a great plant. I love this, and she is doing a good, good, good job. Next, we have my Christmas cactus. It is really doing well. I don't know if it's because I gave it Super Thrive and Fertilizer or what, but my sister has one of these under, like, normal average, like, houseplant conditions, meaning I just water it sometimes. I don't. She does. 
and hers is also getting lots of new growth but look at this this has grown these two big new leaves this one's growing a new leaf here here and on the top of this one and they grow like mad they grow so quickly every day and I'm really loving this and these start out I don't know if you know but they start out red and then they slowly spread out and turn green and they're just gorgeous gorgeous and look at the babies Next we have my Vanagar Apple Blossom. Her canes are really shriveling and the leaves are getting a little bit limp. Um, but otherwise these leaves look good and she is putting down a lot of new roots. Additionally we've got two, let's see if we can see. We've got, no, here we are. We have one healthy new growth. Of course you won't focus right now, come on. Yes, one healthy new growth and a second healthy new growth just on the other side of that. There it is. So these, these are the new growths right now, but the bulbs are getting really shriveled. I think I need to just water this some more because otherwise this plant was looking very healthy and it has put down a ton of new roots since I repotted it. So if anyone has some suggestions with this plant, let me know. But otherwise, I'm going to chalk it up to bad watering habits. We've got a my mounted psychopsis, which had zero roots when I got it, and it hasn't poked any roots out of the moss yet. However, it is still somehow living. It is not rotting, and sometimes I peek in the roots and I do see a new growth. Now, a guy in my orchid society said that what I should do someday is when the roots start bursting out of this, just get a bigger pot cut the ties in the back here and lay some media around it and just let the plant really wrap around this mount without disturbing the roots. So I think I'm going to do that someday. Here are my two mounted Bulbophyllums. This one was the No ID. Had a sick leaf so I had to cut it. Um, nothing really exciting happening here. Um, nothing at all really. I don't know what to see. But there is this little teeny, you see this guy? Can any Bulbo growers tell me what that is? I don't know. But that's this guy. Nothing exciting. And next we have my Bulbophyllum Fascinator, which I loved very well. I probably underwater these a bit, but the bulbs are still pretty plump, um, except the new growth has just not been doing much at all. But also she has... She has this little green thing coming off of there too, you see that? So I don't know what that is, but she, this new growth has just been like getting browner and browner since I got it, and I honestly don't know what that means. But these are the mounted Bulbophyllums. Also, really quick, this Bulbophyllum is getting some spots under the leaves. Focus. Yes. And I don't know what these are, but they appeared within the last two weeks, and I'm kind of clueless, so... I hope these don't spread because I really want to see this plant bloom someday. We have the mounted Sideria japonica. She's out of bloom, most of you probably know, but this little tiny leaf that she had when I was growing, or when I got her, was only maybe this long and now has shot out this big. However, this leaf is rather skinny compared to the other leaves, so I'm wondering if I'm not giving her enough light, not giving her enough vitamins or something, but this leaf is just super slender compared to the others. Otherwise, the plant is doing well, aside, aside from being underwatered because, it, well, it's finals week. I'm sorry, baby plants, please forgive me. <laughs> but yes, that's the Sideria from Andy's Orchids. Up next, we have a trinity of Phalaenopsis orchids. This one... Um, is a little bit sick looking. It developed these light colors around the leaf and the leaf didn't grow out this way so I know that's not a sign that it's um, striated. What's the word? You know what I mean, the stripy leaves. Um, it's growing a new leaf that looks healthy. Its roots are okay but it hasn't had any major growth. This is the one that I got. It's the second orchid I ever got and the first orchid that I didn't kill. So go me! But yeah, this one, I've been trying to recover it for over a year now. This is the rescue orchid my friend gave me from a hoarder house, and it is a mystery orchid. I don't know what 
this Phalaenopsis will look like. But if we look at the leaves, we can see the health of the leaves improves. This one was big, the next one was smaller, the next one was very tiny. And since I've gotten it, it has grown these one, two, and three leaves. Now this leaf is thinner than this one, and this leaf is almost as thick and big as this one on the bottom, meaning it's almost made a full recovery. Additionally, it's so set in the pot that I can hold the plant up by its stem or whatever you call it on a fowl, and it doesn't come out, so good job getting established. Let's have a look-see around the pot. See those nice long roots? That's very pleasing to my eyes. I don't know about you, but I'm loving it. We have my giant sunburned pink phalaenopsis. I'm wearing a pink dress today. I had a cotton candy frappuccino. The camera I'm recording on is pink. My scarf on my head is pink. I'm like all pinked out today and this is pink too so I couldn't get rid of it in spite of this sunburn. I did cut off one of its old ugly leaves because it was twisty and I really hated it but otherwise this is doing well. This leaf has grown in the last few days this size and she has a lot of catching up to do if she wants to get focus. She wants to get as big as these other leaves but we've just got some new roots around the pot. Things are looking good nice green growth tips i see around so this is a happy plant and well on its way to an excellent excellent life in this pot next let's have a look at these paths so this is the first path i ever got it's a path modier hybrid i love the mottled leaves um but this leaf appears sick however this has been a problem for like six months now and it hasn't changed at all so i'm assuming it's okay. Uh-oh, I let someone's moss dry out. Damn finals week, ruining my life. But anyway, these new growths, this one here, um, this little one, and this one are doing very well. Um, this is very big, and I'm really excited to see this all leafy, because this, even when out of bloom, I love this. Though I do prefer stronger markings on the leaves, but this is really cool. Next is the second. Oh my god, it's dry. <gasps> I'm so sorry for what I've done. I messed up. Anyway, this is my second um, Pathmodier hybrid. It isn't dead yet, so we have some hope. Um, its new growths are also looking good. We've got this one, and we've got this little teeny, teeny one right there. So it's doing all right. And next we've got my Pathnivium hybrid. These leaves are totally gorgeous, really firm, hard to bend, and underneath they're purple. Now guys, get this. I have seen these hybrids in Trader Joe's for like $12. You need to get on that. I've seen them. If you're in the U.S., go to Trader Joe's, get yourself one because these are great, great. That's all i got to say about that. We have but my yellow Miltoniopsis. Um, Orchid Dreaming, I know I talked to you about sending you a division of this, but I never got a message from you. Um, but it's not really got any new growth going on right now, so we might have to hold off on that. But I will send you a division of this if you want. Um, this one, it has like a single new growth in there, and otherwise is not doing literally anything. Nothing. No excitement. No excitement here. But this is a good uh, opportunity to look at the difference between Miltoniopsis foliage, which tends to be more of a seafoam green, and other Oncidium type foliage, which tends to be brighter green. See that? Yeah. Alright, this is the um, very naughty division I took from my mom's plant for Mother's Day. It is a... Uh, <laughs> this video is getting long, I'm sorry. It's a uh, Sherry Baby. Not doing anything. Just looking good. Here's something new I'm trying with my Dracula low tax. So this little plant has nothing going on. As I read in an article, it likes to pretend to be grass, so it's not doing much, but it loves super high humidity. So I've got it in this moss, and I've changed from a plastic pot to a clay pot, but I have a clay pot within a clay pot and between that totally wet sphagnum moss is shoved in and the Dracula low tax just sits right in the middle. And this glass vessel is hopefully going to keep the humidity high enough that I can convince this baby to do something for me. Come on little Dracula, come on! <laughs> 
Here's my repotted eBay cattleyas, which I had in the last video. These are simply repotted. Not much to say here, except that I hope they will settle into their new homes happily and behave themselves. Also, the rot on this orchid does not seem to have spread anywhere, so that's good. Good, good, good. I have to label these. I forgot their names. Oops. Here are two Cattleyas. This one is my weird hybrid Hawaiian Lightning Sugar Bear. It's Sophrolela Cattleya, and its new growths have really just kicked ass. Look at these guys. Two leaves on this one. I don't know. It looks like a unifoliate, but it's doing this, so God knows what it's up to. And it's put out a lot of roots, but I covered them up in a little bit of bark so they'd have more moisture. Now this is a new purchase, and this was like extremely cro close to the growing lamps in the store that I bought it from, and this is Cattleya forbesii. And forbesii has just got some really interesting flowers. Someone said online they smell like bubblegum. That's exciting. I'm hoping this plant is not like vitamin deficient, but rather just overly tanned and deficient in chlorophyll for now. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to try to let it green up. This, These two leaves actually look greener than they did a few days ago, so we'll see. But um, if you want to know what happens if you let your cattleyas get too much sun, this is probably it. And this is probably not enough sun, so let's get a happy medium, you two. We have my Encyclia cochleata. Um, this one is doing great. Check out these roots along the sides of the pot. It's really starting to take over, and if we move this moss a little bit, you can see that all these roots are new and all of them are exciting. One last little exciting thing to note about this plant is that I see this little bump here, and this could be a new growth, and I'm really crossing my fingers, although these two, these two guys here should be new growths, but this bump is also promising. Next up, we got my Brassavola nodosa, which is doing awesome. So these are the one, two, three, four new growths that it put out. So these four on the front, they're doing well. Um, we have another little nubbin looking thing here and another little nubbin looking thing there that might be gross. But also these roots are taking over this moss ball. See, they're all the way down here, so I guess this is a great setup. This is a happy little plant. And then this this orchid, uh, not doing not doing a lot. Just uh, very slowly growing this growth and sitting in my windowsill. I try to put it right up against the glass. I don't know if that's going to be enough light or not, but we'll see. And this guy's hanging cool as ever, right? Right. Next on the menu, we got mounts. So this is my Oncidium Heaven Scent Redolence. Check out the roots just bursting on this mount. They're all around the sides. This is a really happy plant, and it goes to show you that some Oncidiums really love being mounted. I think a majority of epiphytic orchids would probably be happy to be mounted, but that's up to your personal growing style. Next we have uh, Nelly Eiler number two. You saw number one a long time ago. She had really wrinkly leaves, but then I mounted her and they stopped wrinkling because I keep the moss wet every day, but not quite every day as I should, but we're working on it. Um, so yeah, she's got this. I like rip off accordion leaves so I can make sure the growth still comes out. So that's what that is. And I pull accordion leaves out too so the plant doesn't get backed up. Now that's a... Uh, that's naughty practice. If you want to try it, do it at your own risk. Next, you have that lovely yellow phalaenopsis that I had. It's mounted. Um, it looks bigger on camera than it is in real life, but it has one new leaf, and inside the new leaf, there's another new leaf. I don't know if you can see it, but that's exciting. And also, we've got a green little root tip. This thing's going to attach itself to the mount like it's supposed to, and that's exciting. So yeah, and also I've trained the spike to come up, and I'm hoping this will do something and rebloom for me, because that would be super awesome. Please do it. Please do that, okay? Thanks. Okay. My Oncidium Twinkle. This one has been doing actually very well. If we look here, this is be going wild with roots. If we pull away, there's just roots, 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 roots 
all around this plant. Now these old pseudobulbs look terrible, but the new ones are getting pretty plump, which is exciting. Um, this was infested with fungus gnats, so I remounted it. And when I remounted it, guess what I found? All those roots. Yes. And this is going to be exciting when it fills up this mount. Do you look around my grow space? So here it is. We've got all these guys. The paths are over there in the shadier area. My light loving orchids are on this mount. And now I, it's hard to see. Now I have a window full of catlias. Those guys are looking good. But um, we've got my Dendrobium phalaenopsis still in bloom, still looking beautiful. But uh, yeah, no new growth, just a few dying leaves. Nothing too great here. The other Dendrobium phalaenopsis is totally out of bloom. We've got Dendrobium antenatum in full bloom, which is really exciting. This is just looking great, and the flowers don't really smell like anything on her, but the leaves are going well. This new growth, very healthy. New roots, they sound like a damn broken record, guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, we've got that. And then we've got a Maxillaria tenufolia that I mounted on a homemade log thing. She's getting some growth. And last, well not last, we've got a Maxillaria tenufolia in a pot. So, yeah, this little orchid is probably going to die on me, unfortunately. It's my Odontonia papagino mia more, and it's, that is not promising. Not promising at all. And let's go over to my shelf really quick. So here's my orchid shelf. I've got Oncidiums on top. They never get direct sun there, always just bright light. Some light loving ones a little bit lower, and my Bulbophyllums and things are hanging off the front of that, along with the Sideria. So that's, that's my grow space. That's my update. My god, I thought that would be a lot shorter, so thanks for sticking in if you've stuck around this far. Thank you so much. Alright, enjoy! Happy growing! Bye guys!